For the next several days, we will be reading books by Seymour Simon. The title of today's book is Frogs. What do you already know about frogs? Even though frogs are common animals in our world, you might be surprised at what you will learn. As we read the book, listen for new things about frogs that you did not know before, and think about how the author presents the information in this book. Frogs by Seymour Simon. Frogs are amphibians, animals that live near live in water and on land. Even when living on land, frogs don't drink water. Instead, they soak water into their bodies through their moist skins. Frogs look like frogs only part of their lives. For the first part of their lives, they don't have arms or legs and they look more like fish. Newborn frogs called tadpoles live underwater and even have gills like fish. But something strange and wonderful happens as they become adults. They lose their gills, grow arms and legs, and come on land as frogs. Early spring is the best time to look for frogs in temperate regions in the central and eastern parts of the United States and Canada. The sound of frogs is the signal that spring is coming. Just after the snow melts, you can hear the sounds of frogs called spring peepers. Spring peepers are small frogs that are less than an inch and a half in length. What do you notice about the pictures in this book? Peepers wake up from their winter sleep and begin to peep loudly from early March to May or June. They have sacks under their mouths that inflate like little balloons. When the air is released from the sack, it makes a sound like a high pitched whistle, but a chorus of peeps is like an orchestra of jingling bells. The chorus is the sound of hundreds of male spring peepers calling for mates. If you go close to a pond of peepers, they fall silent and they're hard to see. Spring peepers begin to sing at sundown because they are the most active at night. Authors of nonfiction books often organize and tell about the information in their books in a way to make it easier for you to understand. What does Seymour Simon tell you? Frogs are exothermic which, or cold-blooded, which means their body temperature changes with their surroundings. They are cold when the water around or air around them is cold, and they are warm when the water or air around them is warm. Just like their ancestors, frogs are, are adaptable to different conditions and have been on Earth for over 140 million years. Scientists know this because they have found frog fossils that date back to the Jurassic period, period when dinosaurs roamed the land. Different kinds of frogs live all over the world and on every continent except ice-covered Antarctica. They usually live in near slow-moving bodies of water or wetlands, such as lakes, ponds, and marshes. But some kinds of frogs live in fast-moving waters, such as waterfalls, while other kinds live in dry deserts. In the deserts, frogs burrow into the ground and stay in a kind of sleep called estivation. Frogs do not live in oceans or other bodies of salt water. Frogs in temperate areas come out of their winter sleep in the early spring 
when the temperature goes over 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Male frogs begin to croak in the spring in the warming waters of a pond. They use their front legs to clasp female frogs that were attracted by the croaking. The eggs are laid by the female frog directly into the water and are fertilized by cells from the male. Temperate region frogs lay thousands of eggs. Each egg is about the size of a pinhead and surrounded by a jelly-like substance. The jelly swells up in the water and sticks together with other eggs in large clumps. The eggs take a few days to three weeks to hatch. Most frogs abandon their eggs once they're in the water, but not all eggs hatch by themselves. Marsupial frogs carry their eggs with them. Glass frogs guard their eggs by sitting near or on top of them. Looking at frog legs with a mag magnifying glass opens up new visions. The egg is black above and white below. The white is the egg yolk that supplies food to the dark developing embryo. The egg floats dark side up and is warmed by sunlight, while the white yolk faces downwards, making the egg more difficult to see. So stop for a moment and think about what you're learning about frogs that you did not know before. How are the photographs helping you understand the ideas? Newly hatched tadpoles don't look like frogs at all. They are tiny animals with no mouths, nostrils, or legs. Like fish, they have outside gills, which let them get oxygen directly from the water. A young tadpole spends most of its time attached to plants, egg jelly, or rocks in the water. For the first few days, tadpoles feed on their own egg yolks. During that time, their tails grow longer and their outside gills form. They begin to swim freely and feed on water plants. Tadpoles are a favorite kind of food of fish, water beetles, and many other animals that hunt them in ponds and lakes. Tadpoles are fast swimmers, but only a few will escape their predators and grow into adults. During the next few weeks of a tadpole's life, a great change called metamorphosis takes place. First, small back legs appear and begin to grow larger. Toes form and legs thicken and begin to look like frog legs. The tadpole begins to use its legs to swim. After the hind legs grow, tiny front legs appear. As soon as the front legs appear, the tail begins to shrink. The eyes bulge out and the tadpole starts to look like a frog. Inside the tadpole, the gills disappear and lungs develop. The tadpole surfaces every so often to take a breath of air. After a while, the tail is completely gone and the tadpole is no more. In its place is a complete tiny froglet. The froglet needs to come out on a rock or a bit of land so that it can rest while breathing air or it might drown. In nature, most kinds of frogs live along the banks of ponds, lakes, and streams. Others live in fields, woodlands, and wetlands. Still others live in trees, hidden in underground burrows, or in places distant from water. Wherever frogs live as adults, almost all of them come back to the water to mate and lay their eggs to begin the cycle of metamorphosis once again. So frogs go through metamorphosis as part of their life cycles. 
Metamorphosis means the frog makes a large change in how its body looks from one stage of life to the next. What other living things go through metamorphosis or change in their body, bodily shape? Like most animals, frogs have five main senses, sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell. Frogs have good eyesight. They will snap at anything small move around moving they see. Their eyes bulge out from their heads so they can see forward and backward and sideways all at the same time. When a frog floats just below the surface of the water in a pond, its eyes are like the periscope of a submarine. It's on the lookout above the water for food or enemies. The frog is well camouflaged in this position and can barely be seen from above or below. The size and movement of an object is important to a frog. Frogs do not snap at objects that are too large or are not in motion. For example, frogs snap at insects that buzz near them. But if a large object such as yourself moves near a frog sitting on the banks of a pond, it will stop croaking and leap into the water. If you stay still or move very slowly, you may be able to get close up to a frog without disturbing it. Frogs use their eyes to help swallow food. When a frog blinks, its eyeballs push downward, making a bulge in the top of its mouth. The bulge squeezes the food down to the back of its throat. A frog's eyes are covered by lower transparent eyelids. They protect the eyes underwater and keep them moist on dry land. If something touches the eyelid, the frog responds by drawing the eyelid up and pulling the eye back into its head. Frogs have good hearing, but they don't have ears that stick out on the outside of their bodies the way you do. Their eardrums are level with the frog's skin and are on either side of the head. You can tell the difference between a male and female frog by the size of their eardrums. In males, eardrums are about the size of the eyes. In females, eardrums are smaller than the eyes. Hearing is important to frogs. Male frogs attack, attract female frogs with a croaking song. Frogs also have a sense of touch. Stroke a frog's skin very gently with the tip of a blade of grass and it may not move. But poke it with a finger and the frog will jump away. Frogs have a touch sensitive lateral line along their bodies. When frogs swim in a river, they pick up the pressure of the rushing water on their lateral lines and respond by swimming against the current. Frogs can also sense temperature changes and dry conditions through their skins. If a frog sits in the sun for too long, it just hops away into the shade or takes a dip in the cool water. Frogs have other senses as well. When a frog puts bitter insects into its mouth, such as the acid producing red ants, it will spit them out quickly. Frogs use their sticky tongues to catch and swallow insects. Unlike yours, a frog's tongue is not attached to the back of its mouth. A frog's tongue is attached to the front of its mouth, which allows the frog's tongue to reach out much farther than your tongue. By early autumn, Leopard frogs and bullfrogs appear around the edges of ponds and streams. 
Temperatures soon start to drop as the days grow shorter. Winter is coming. Before the ponds freeze over, the frogs go into the water and begin their winter sleep, called hibernation. Hibernation is when an animal slows down its breathing and body movement so that it can live through the cold winter by using the energy stored in its body. During hibernation, a frog's eyes are covered by the transparent lower lid. It doesn't respond easily to touch. In temperate, temperate regions, most kinds of frogs hibernate. Hibernating frogs spend their winter sleep lying on top of the mud at the bottom of the pool. They get oxygen from the water and don't need to come up for air. At times, they slowly swim around. Frogs would starve or freeze to death if they did not hibernate in winter. When spring comes, temperatures rise and the ice melts. Frogs now wake up and go on with their lives. Frogs spend their lives on land, such as the wood frog and the spring peeper, hibernate in deep cracks in logs or rocks or deep in leaf litter. These frogs are not as well protected from the cold as underwater frogs and may freeze. They can still survive because they have a high concentration of glucose, a kind of sugary antifreeze in their bodies. There are different kinds of amphibians in the world, frogs and toads, salamanders and newts, and a rare group called Sicilian, legless and sightless animals that look like worms. Frogs and toads are by far, far the most common amphibians and the ones that you see most often. Frogs and toads look very much alike, so deciding which is which is not always easy. Most frogs have bulging eyes, smooth skin, long hind legs, and webbed feet, and live in or near water. Most toads live on land, have dry skin, with warts and stubby bodies with short hind legs, and are less active. But some frogs don't live near water and have no webbing, and some toads have smooth skin. So the word frog is sometimes used for both frogs and toads. Most people say frogs when they're talking about members of a family called Renidae, which includes leopard frogs, bullfrogs, green frogs, picker, picker frogs, and wood frogs. They are sometimes called true frogs because their body forms and their life stories are so similar. True toads are members of the family called Bophaninidae, and they have poison glands behind their eyes. The poison is a milky white toxin that the toads squeeze onto the surface of their skin when threatened. When swallowed, the poison is dangerous to dogs, cats, and even humans. What have you learned about the differences between frogs and toads? Here are some common frogs found in temperate regions. Leopard frogs are mostly green and brown with a white underside. They are named leopard because of the dark spots across their backs. They were once the most abundant frog in North America, but they are far fewer in number since the 1970s, probably because of environmental reasons such as acid rain and destruction of habitats. Bullfrogs are the largest frogs in North America. The females are larger than the males, and they grow up to eight inches in length. They spend their lives in and around water. They are green above and white or cream colored underneath. 
Bullfrogs live alone and are very territorial. They rarely meet except to fight or to mate. The females lay as many as 20,000 eggs in huge sheets attached to underwater plants. Wood, wood frogs have a black band that stretches past both eyes to the eardrums and looks like a bandit's mask. They are one of the first kinds of frogs to wake up and breed in early spring, sometimes while the pond is still partly frozen. The frogs sound like quacking ducks and can be heard from far away. After a few days of breeding, the eggs are left in masses in the pond and the adult frogs go off into the woods. They will return to lay eggs again the following spring. The leopard frog at the top, the bullfrog up here, and the uh, wood frog over on this page. Here are some unusual frogs from around the world. Darwin's frogs live in the cool forest streams of South America. They are small and green and don't look unusual, but they have a very odd breeding behavior. The female lays about three dozen eggs and the male guards them for a few weeks until they're ready to hatch. Then the male Darwin's frog carries around the developing tadpoles in its vocal pouch. When the tadpoles develop into tiny frogs, they are spat out in the water and swim away. Poison dart frogs are a family of some of the most beautiful colored frogs in the world. Depending on the particular species, these frogs can be red, blue, green, yellow, gold, or a mixture. Their exotic colors and patterns warn other animals not to eat them because they are poisonous. The males are great parents, carrying both eggs and tadpoles on their backs. Amazon horned, horned frog. Amazon horned frogs are about the size of a grapefruit, much bigger than the, the frogs in a pond near you. These big and round frogs are found in marshes and swamps in the rainforests of the Amazon basin. They hide in the leaf litter in the forest so that only their heads stick out. They will eat any small animal and even try to eat animals that are too big to be swallowed whole. That's why they're sometimes called Pac-Man frogs. Here are some interesting toads from around the world. American toads are the most common toads in the United States. They are usually brown, olive, or brick red and have warts all over the bodies. American toads live in forests, fields, lawns, and gardens. They hop across the ponds in, in the spring breeding season and in the fall when they are looking for places to hibernate. The toad call is a long trill that sounds much like a cricket's song. You can tell which is which because toads sing in spring and crickets chirp in the fall. American toads eat insects, earthworms, spiders, and just about any small creature that wanders by. Midwife toad. Midwife toad males carry a string of eggs wrapped around their ankles. The eggs develop for several weeks before they are released into ponds as tadpoles. These toads live in Germany, France, and other mid-European countries. Fire-bellied toads don't look much like much from above an average size green toad with black spots. But when it feels threatened, the fire belly toad rises up and arches its back to display a red and black belly. 
This display warns predators that the toad is poisonous and that they had better not eat it. This toad is common in streams and ponds in parts of China, Korea, Japan, and Russia. Climate change and global warming may have affected frogs' abilities to keep their bodies cool and wet enough. Because frogs absorb water through their skin, they are at risk of dying from water pollution and acid rain. Chemicals, fertilizer, sewage runoff, and other kinds of man-made pollution threaten frogs. The number of frogs is declining in many places around the world. A major world, worldwide threat to frogs today is the chytrid fungus. The fungus feeds on keratin, a substance in the frog's skin that makes it tough. The fungus does not usually affect tadpoles, but it can kill adult frogs. Scientists think that about one third of the world's frog population may have the fungus. There's no effective treatment so some scientists are trying to quarantine and keep safe as many frog species as possible in zoos and other facilities. Chrytid fungus is a worldwide problem, but there are a few things you can do to help stop the spread. You should never release foreign pet frogs into the wild. Released foreign frogs can breed and overwhelm the local frog population. They can also spread disease. If you spot many sick or dead frogs in your area, contact your state or federal wildlife department and tell them about the, what you found. The information may be helpful to scientists studying the problem. Sounds like there are a lot of things that can harm frogs. Why do you think Seymour Simon included that in this book? Frogs play an important role in the balance of nature. They help to control the insect population. They are an important food source for many other kinds of animals, such as birds and snakes. And because of their double life as tadpoles in water and adults on land, even common frogs are among the most interesting animals in the world. And that is Frogs by Seymour Simon.